quick overview of how to work the Coulomb's Law Lab. Okay, when you start out, the two pith balls will be charged. You can see what the charges are by clicking on the charge 2 and the charge 1. You can also see both pith, pith balls will have exactly the same mass. Because they have the same mass, and because Newton's law says they'll have equal and opposite forces, these two pith balls will both swing back to the same angle. So when you ask to see the angle, it will only show you the angle on one, because the other one will be at the exact same angle. If you want to see how far apart the two pith balls are, you can hit show grid. It will put one pith ball at the zero centimeter mark, and then by estimating, you can see where the other pith ball is. If you want to move the two pith balls closer together, we can do that by simply clicking on the arrows. We can move either pith ball. You'll notice if you move pith ball one, that the zero mark of your ruler will move with it to make things a little bit easier. Okay, you'll notice when the pith balls get closer together, the angle that the uh, pith balls swing out at changes because there's going to be a greater force between the two balls. Okay, to find out what force you're going to experience between the two pith balls, what we want to do is realize that we have a force of gravity going down. We have a force from the two charged pith balls, an electrostatic force, repelling them. And finally, we have a force tension from the string pulling up and on an angle. The way this should work out is that the forces going to the right should equal the forces to the left, and the forces down should equal the forces up. So if we take the upward component of tension, that has to equal gravity. And that's where we want to start our problem. So we again take a look at the mass of the pith balls, 77 milligrams. We then calculate the force of gravity on the pith ball and that comes out to about 7.55 e to the negative fourth newtons. Okay we know the angle for this triangle also so now we can find the force pulling to the right or in this case to the left. Okay, so we just do tangent of the angle. Make sure we work in degrees because that's how the angles will be given in the program. And the tangent should be the x component of your force tension over the y component, which is the force of gravity that we just calculated. Okay, so let's switch over to view our angle. And it's a little hard to see because I got all this writing on top, but it looks like we're about almost 20 degree angle. Try and be a little more accurate when you do this for real. Okay, so put in 20 degrees as your angle, put in your vertical force as your force gravity, and solve for the force in the x direction. So in this case, that would be approximately 2.74 e to the negative fourth. Okay, that force that we just found, that x component, that 2.75 e to the negative fourth, that should be our force electric, and that's what we were interested in. Coulomb was looking at what were the factors that affected the force electric. By using the angle of the string, and the force of gravity, we can find the force electric between these two charged pith balls. For those who know the formula, we can check to make sure that this comes out correctly by using the formula for Coulomb's law, which would be 9e to the ninth, Coulomb's constant, times the two charges. 9e to the 9th 
times our two charges, which again you can view by just clicking on the thing. So this would be 36.5 e to the negative ninth. This would be 36.5 e to the negative ninth. And then the distance between the charges, we'd use our ruler down here. And that would be about 21, almost 22 centimeters, so maybe 21.8 centimeters. Don't forget to square that. Don't forget to put it into meters. So let's see how close we got to our correct answer. So we take 9e to the ninth. We multiply by our two charges. So 36.5e to the negative ninth times our other charge, which is also by coincidence 36.5e to the negative ninth. We divide by the distance between them, which is about 21.8. Again, we make sure we put it in meters and we square it. And we get an answer of about 2.5 e to the negative fourth. Again, we're not that far off from what we uh, measured and what we calculated. The biggest source of error is going to be measuring the angle. It was especially hard since I had the writing on top of the program. But this is a quick overview of how to do the Coulomb's Law calculations to find force electric. Again, what you probably want to have your students do is to calculate the force electric and then change some things, like change the charge on one of the objects and see how that affects force electric. You could change the distance between the charges. Just be very careful because your distance between the objects is going to change slightly. So we want to make sure that if we're changing the charge, we move our strings, our string supports, to get back to approximately the same distance we had originally.